the first thing I'm going to say is that bakers and anyone who makes stuff, so any process driven person has the ability to contain, to waste a lot of time. It is just the way this is built. Um, we just have a lot of opportunities to waste a lot of time. And because a lot of us are creative, we're going to get in there and we're going to get our fingers going and doing something and that, and then you'd be like, wait a minute, I just waste a lot of time on that. Or let's say you are creative and you're not techie. So you're online wasting a lot of time because you don't understand the platform and you don't understand what your ad is supposed to look like. And you're, you're just like there because you feel like you need to be there, but you can feel it. You can feel like it's a waste of time. So we're really prone to that in this particular business. Um, and we're really good at wasting our own time. That's just how it is. Like, <laughs> we don't notice that we're doing it until it's already done. We're just good at it. And then it's like usually the last thing that we want to happen, right, is to waste our own time. Uh, so we're going to get to the bottom of what's sucking your time, the most common things, and then we can love up-level your business. We can just, your game's going to go up because you're going to realize, you're going to pinpoint some of those. You're going to say, you know what, I'm not going to waste my time on that anymore because I know what to do. So that's the whole point of this talk. We want to make it easy. We're going to let it be easy. Just let it be easy. It doesn't have to be hard. I'm teaching myself that right now. <laughs> I'm going to let it be easy. Okay. So what do people normally waste time on? So the number, I'm going to do this kind of in order of like how you're going to experience them in your business. So the number one thing I'm going to say, and you guys might be on top of this. I don't know, but I'm going to mention it because I had to learn this myself. I'm wasting time on shopping. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not talking about going on Amazon at 11 PM and like find some thing that you don't need. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you think about your business and you think about going shopping, uh, what is it? What are we doing? Um, what are we buying? How are we buying it? How often are we going? What is it that we're buying? There's all these questions of like shopping, right? Because you have to purchase things for your business. As you get bigger and you get more orders, you're going to change the way you purchase and who you buy from based on who you are. So if you're a small time bakery working out of your home, more than likely you're gonna be using your local grocery store and you're gonna be using some kind of probably Amazon or shipping business, depending on where you live, or a cake shop. I will tell you now that cake shops, if you like love them dearly and you wanna give them money, please go there. But no matter what you do, it's almost always gonna be more expensive than a wholesaler or something like Amazon because they're cutting out the middleman of those people in the shop paying the rent. Does that make sense? You can choose how you want to do your business. You could say, like one of your tactics, one of your niches might be, I only buy from local providers. People will come to you if they agree with shop local and that's important to them. They will pay you more to use that business. That makes sense. Um, so you don't have to stop using them. I'm just letting you know, like I've, I, I even, after the cookie con, we went to a local um, cake shop, like not, not cake, buying cakes, but like cake supply shop. And I, I don't know, it was like kind of pricey and I'm thinking, I don't, I can get all of this for like half this price. So because I didn't need anything, I didn't buy anything, but, um, and you may not know that if you haven't bought this stuff very much, but most of the time you're going to pay more in there, but they're good if you can't find that item online or if you need it right away, like you need it today, then you go over there and use them. So they, there are, you know, obviously I support them. <laughs> I love a good cake shop. Don't get me wrong. Cake supply shop over here. I'm going to look at the comments real quick. Sandy says, the course is worth every cent. Oh, good. I'm glad you like it. Yep. She's having, she seems to be doing well with it. Um, shopping. Yes. So, okay. So efficiency and, and more planning to roll into your normal shopping. Now, this is just, like I said, you like Elaine over here may already know all this. And then she's like, why is she talking about this? But I want to mention it for people who haven't ever considered it. Okay. So shopping, um, group your shopping trips and look at stores to go to that have it all. Okay. So try to think of a way of like, how can I, how can I break my shopping down? So I'm not spending so much time driving around and trying to find places. If it ends up that you have to shop at a store that maybe has not as many options, but everything that you have, you might end up shopping there more. So I don't know where you all live here. We don't, we literally have like only one option because I live in the middle of nowhere. Um, but if I went to a big city, I might look online and see like, is there, um, like Hobby Lobby school cause they have craft stuff, but they don't have food. So if you needed, you know, powdered sugar and you needed some, um, you know, like an offset spatula or something like that, you probably wouldn't go to Hobby Lobby, but you might go to Walmart 
because Walmart has both of those things. So think about the time and the money and the gas that you're saving going to one shop that has everything, okay? Um, or addi using additional online ordering services to fill in the gaps. So let's say you really don't wanna go to Walmart, you don't like that business, so you wanna use Hobby Lobby or whatever business that you agree with, but you need an extra little thing that they don't have, then maybe consider an online service that you like or just something that's convenient and putting them together so that you're not spending all this time running around your town or city trying to find like one little thing, if that makes sense. I use Amazon Prime. I have a link for it. I think it saves you some money if you don't. Um, I think almost everyone I've ever met uses Amazon Prime. So if you don't have it already, I think I can save you some money. Just send me a message. I'm not totally sure about that, but they do give you like a share this Prime link so I can help you <laughs> get Prime if you don't have that. Um, Annie says, we definitely have to plan ahead when shopping. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so the next thing I was going to bring up, um, of course, is make a list. Some people don't like lists. They don't like paper and all that. Use your phone. Make a list on, take a picture of stuff that you need, however you want to make your list. Um, I would also suggest purchasing twice as much as you need for that particular week. So if you're going to make, um, you know, a couple chocolate cakes, don't buy as much cocoa as you need for that order. Does that make sense? Like buy enough cocoa for twice that order because what if you break it? What if you drop it? What if it burns and you're trying to bake it like two o'clock in the morning? You get, it's scary, right? So get just get as twice as, twice as much as you need so you always have a little bit of backup. Something that's connected to this and something you, if you're creating your menus right now or you're thinking of like um, kind of slimming down your menu a, a little bit, I want you to think about connecting your recipes, okay? So try to imagine them being from the same family. They don't have to look the same or taste the same, and they could have some very different ingredients, but consider using the same base ingredients or something similar throughout your recipes, even through your cookies and cakes. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, use the same, um, try to use the same flour in your cakes and your cookies. Try to use the same extracts in your cakes and your cookies. You know what I mean? Don't, what I'm saying is when you go to the, uh, when you go to the shopping center, wherever you're going, what you don't want to do is have to buy like tiny little things for every single recipe because they're like wild. Like, oh, I need, you know, whole wheat flour for this recipe and then I need flaxseed for this recipe, even though they kind of do the same thing. I'm going to like use two different things and then I'm going to buy all purpose and I'm going to buy self rising, even though all I have to do is add baking soda or baking powder. You know, like you can make things work to be the same so that you can just buy the same ingredients in bulk, if that makes sense. Okay, um, and the very last thing about shopping, which is connected to the pricing and what you're, um, how you are connecting to your customers, is that if you want to be efficient when you're shopping, you take prepayment every single time. So if you shop on Monday for your cakes for that weekend, you need to have money in hand 100%, 50% at the least. I would like you to have 100% in your hand before you ever turn your oven on. But let's say it's 50% or 100%. You need to have that prepayment before the trip. So if you're going on Monday, you should probably ask for that prepayment like the Friday before or even the Monday before that. So two weeks prior to that. So that the moment you walk, you step foot in that store, you have every single cent that you need to cover every single one of those ingredients. So there's not any kind of confusion on who's buying ingredients, why they're buying them. Um, basically, you need to be, you need to be um, funded like before you ever go right it's got to be at least a week before because most of us shop like a couple days or a week before something's due right so that is the last shopping tip <laughs> yes yeah use my phone's notepad that's what i do too yeah for sure or even if i write it out i just take a picture of it and then i take that with me and then i can use my little pen to mark it off or i just obviously just look at a picture okay so the second thing that people waste time on is inefficient cleaning and so I don't know if you guys noticed, but I put a post up in the bakery, bakery business school group. Um, and it, I asked if you could uh, delegate anything out in your business, what would it be? And one of the top things was cleaning because we're like constantly making messes, right? It's like our job. Our job is to make a mess. Um, and we're constantly cleaning because you have to clean before and you have to clean during and you have to clean after and then you have to clean if you're in your home kitchen, you're cleaning your home kitchen like 
from your dinner. I mean, it's just lots of cleaning. So I wanted to go over a few things that I have noticed with the cleaning. Um, again, if you get into the Elite Mentorship Program, we're adding on the organization and cleaning mentor, Claire. It is her natural um, inclination. It is her, it is literally part of like her persona. Um, so she's really good at it and she loves to teach. So if you want to join us there, her first live is this month. She is pumped. We've already talked about what she's gonna do. She's actually gonna join me on the 6th for a little bit just to give you like a preview. She's coming to my house and she's gonna sit with me like right here. Um, and then she's gonna have a completely one hour full one of her own at the end, or I think middle end-ish of the month. So uh, she's gonna help you a lot more of this, but I'm gonna touch on the top topics just to give you an idea, or from my perspective. So um, if you're just, I'm seeing a few new people are arriving. If you've arrived, go ahead and put a hashtag live or hey, hello, or I'm here in the comment box because I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna do a drawing at the end of this live. Someone's gonna win some, a free thing from the Acceleration Vault. And I want everyone to get entered, so I, but you have to comment so that I can see that you are here. Comment over in there. Anything you want, emojis, um, your favorite quote, <laughs> what you had, or what you're eating for lunch, whatever. Um, Janelle says, I found that having groceries delivered Instacart with a $3 delivery fee was less expensive than paying gas and or sending a $10 an hour in place shopping for two hours. Exactly. So she's automating her grocery shopping. Isn't that amazing? We don't have that here, but I've heard tons of like stay-at-home moms, um, people who work night shift. Like there's a, a very big market gap for people who just want that stuff arriving at their door. So yeah, so she's automating it. Super, super good. $3 in delivery is like nothing. That's very affordable. Elaine says cleaning. Yes. Marion. Hey, glad to have you here, Marion. This is, Monica says, this is what I pay my kids for. I'm mean, I guess, because I don't pay them. <laughs> I just make them do it. Even my four-year-old. <laughs> um, Sherry is here. Hey, how are you? She also joined the Elite. You guys are awesome. So I'm just super pumped. This month is going to be on fire. Okay. So I need to um, go over the cleaning. So I'm just going to give you some of the tips, some of the things I was talking about. So cleaning, uh, the big, this is the biggie for most people, like I said, we saw it on the post where everyone was talking about what they would delegate out. If you can delegate or hire out to help with this, I would suggest giving it a try. Even if it's not something you wanna do all of the time, um, kind of think, first of all, you can claim this on your taxes, okay? This is a tax write-off. They're helping you clean for your business. So if you're paying them, you can write it off, which if, any, if you guys don't know much about taxes, what that means is, if you paid someone like over the year, you paid them $100, you know, to come in and do like deep cleaning or something like that. At the end of the year, your gross income that you cr that you brought in from your bakery business, $100 of that is now not taxable. You don't have to pay taxes on it, okay? And you pay 30% in taxes as a sole proprietor. So it's good news, right? And so it's gonna help you all around. You don't have to pay taxes on that money. Those That person's gonna get some income. You get to support people in your community. It's it's really worthwhile. And sometimes money and time are interchangeable. Sometimes you just gotta pay someone to help you. So I would suggest thinking about that. And it's just common sense to get help sometimes. Um, you could get, like Monica was mentioning, you could get your kids to help. You could get your spouse to help. You could get like some kind of boom box or an Alexa or whatever and like play music and have fun and make it like a ritual um, to clean up, if that would help you, if you don't want to pay someone or you're just not ready to do that, just make it a ritual, make, try to make it fun, I guess is a suggestion. Um, and sometimes if we're having fun, we don't waste as much time because we're just sort of on task. Um, all the cleaning services I've seen have usually been by hour or flat rate. D just depends on it. You'll have to see who's available. Maybe go to Facebook and type in cleaning service or maid or something like that and see what you can come up with. Um, Oh, and then something you can do is if you've taken my pricing course or you have a formula set up for your pricing, you can take what you're paying those people to help you clean. You can take that and you can just divide it out into your pricing formula and you can have your customers start paying for it. So, you know, maybe divide it out so that every customer has to pay an extra 75 cents per order. It's, it's all in the pricing course, but essentially you divide out all your costs per customer and then each customer pays a little bit of everything. So this could be worked into it. 
And if that's the case, then everything on your, you know, um, everything on your price list raises by a dollar or whatever it is, right? You, you'll figure it out when you do it yourself. But then, you know, after you start, it's probably going to be more than a dollar, but after you start adding everything up at the end of the month, they're then paying for it. So you haven't actually gone negative into your profit. Um, so that's a thought, too, if you want to get some help. They could do deep clean once a month, once a week. They could do dishes only, whatever it is. Um, now, backtracking a little bit into the cleaning, and this is going to be Claire's expertise, but it, but I've done this myself. We move all the time because we're military, so you, it's like, I don't know if you guys move all the time or if you've moved recently, <laughs> um, but it's wild. Like when you go to set up new kitchens and clean old kitchens out and all that kind of stuff. So the first thing you're going to do is it's going to start with organizing and purging unneeded items. That is what you have to do. Especially if you're trying to run a business out of your own kitchen, that has got to be taken care of. So I'm going to give you a tip here of what I do when I'm getting ready to purge, ways that I do it that's a really gentle, um, not ripping the Band-Aid off kind of way, that I, I think is really successful for a lot of people and kids. Um, so if you have a kid that's kind of a hoarder or they, you know, they don't like to get rid of toys and stuff, you could try this with them as well, just to like help clear out your house. I've, I'm really into like minimizing and uh, purging and stuff. So if you have any questions about that, ask me. I do a lot of um, a lot of research on that. Elaine says, any training on making labels? Ohio requires it for home cottage licensing. Um, I don't personally have training on it. There's a very, um, let me, I don't have it right now. I'll put a note. I'm going to put up a Harvard document that might have some information for you on that uh, because the labeling is pretty straightforward. It is just, you got to have like seven different things. There's a checklist and you just get them all on there. You can set it up any way you want. It can be a very simple, like you went and got stickers from Walmart and you print it out on your own printer, no color, just black and white. Um, it could be you ordered it from Vistaprint and they just print it and send it to you every month or whatever. It's pretty straightforward, but yeah, I will, um, Ohio. Okay. I will put a post up in the elite group. Okay. With all that in there. All right. She says, oh, there's two of them. Any training on generating ingredient labels? Yeah. Yeah. So I will, um, Elaine, I will look into that for you after the live. Debbie says, I need to make purging my middle name, especially in my shop. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because I don't know what it is, but this culture with the baking is like all these tiny little things. Like, oh, you need this, and you need this cutter, and that cutter, and this tip, and then you're going to need these kind of bags, and these kind of bags, and then you're going to need this kind of turntable, and this kind of turntable, and this kind of pin, and that kind of pin, and it's like all this stuff. Like, if I really wanted to, I don't know if you were here when I showed everyone, but I'm giving away this airbrush that I won at the cookie con. It's handheld and USB. It's like, it's actually pretty sweet. I was sort of considering not giving it away. I was like, I kind of like that, um, but I said I would, so I will. But I don't need one. You know what I'm saying? I have an airbrush. It's fine. It's plug-in. It's not this cool, but I have one. You know? So it's, yeah, the purging mindset number one is, I know this isn't the topic, but purging mindset number one is you only need one of it. <laughs> you don't need multiple things. Unless it's a backup thing that is, like, necessary. If my airbrush broke, I mean, okay. Um, but I've had to move myself a number of times, and it's terrible. Like, terrible. So I really, I'm good at purging because it scares me to not do it. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Here's, so here's my tip. If you're wondering, what is she talking about? What's the tip? All right. So the first thing you're going to do is grab a box. It could be an old Amazon box that came. It could be a tub that has like a clipping lid or a lid of some kind, whatever you want. Grab a box. Try to make it, you know, like at least two by two, maybe a little bit bigger than that. Okay. You're going to go into your area. This could be your kitchen. This could be your shop. I'm going to suggest the kitchen because I'm going to tell you what to do with the space afterwards. So let's say it's your kitchen. You're going to walk into your home kitchen. You are going to fill it with unneeded items and you're going to keep a list. By unneeded, I mean you look at the item and you think to yourself, have I ever used that? And then you might even say, what's that for? Or where did that come from? <laughs> All of those things means it needs to go in the box. Or if you're looking at it and you have this thing and this thing, this steamer and this steamer, and this one has this color, this one's made out of, you know, it's like they're a little bit different. 
Just look at them at the same time and pick the one that makes you feel better. Pick the one that you would grab. You know, that one. It doesn't matter why. Keep that one in your shelving and put the other one in the box. Okay, we're not getting rid of this stuff, so don't worry. Just put it in the box. And then you're going to fill the box up with whatever. Your goal here is going to, you're going to try to clean out an entire drawer and an entire one-piece cabinet. You know, like one opening, one door completely clear. That's your goal. So you want to try to get out as much stuff so that when you start moving things around, you can then have that clear area. Okay? You're going to take your box. You're going to tape it up. You're going to put the list that you made of everything that you put in the box. Could be kind of vague. It doesn't matter. But you need a list. Put that on the outside of the box and put a date on it. Put a date for, let's say, like three months or four months. So March 1, or today's March 2, April, May, June. So you're going to put June 2, 2020. Like March 1 to June, June, June 2, 2020. Okay? And you're going to find somewhere to put that. Downstairs. In your bath, or in your bathroom. <laughs> Not in your bathroom. <laughs> In your garage, somewhere out of the way that you don't see every day, that you're not going to trip over, um, put it somewhere. And then you're just going to live your life. You're going to, you don't have to forget about it, really. I mean, I guess you probably will, but you're going to live your life. If you ever come to the point where you're in, the, you're in your kitchen and you're like, you know what, I used to have another tablespoon server thing. Like, where is that? Go to your box and check the list. See if it's in there. If it is in there, you may open the box and take the thing out, but only take out that one thing that you need or the few things that you need and close it back up. There are some people that keep their boxes for one year, one calendar year. So they see if they need it at any time because some things are seasonal, right? So if they need it, they take it out. But I will guarantee you that there's at least going to be two or three things in your kitchen that you do not need, small or big. It doesn't matter. Um, but you want to get those away and out of your, out of your hair. Once you do that, you're going to clear out one drawer, in one cabinet, it would be beneficial if they were close to each other. And then you're going to store your bakery items in those places. Even if they're multi-use for like, sometimes you use it for the personal reasons, sometimes for the business. I still want them in the bakery area. So everybody knows that's where they go back. If you have spatulas and you use them for your bakery stuff, you should probably have it in your bakery area um, because it helps you find things faster. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. I will say that the newfound space for moving unneeded stuff out is exhilarating. I love it. Um, I'm kind of addicted to it. We go through our house pretty often. My kid is even good at it. I've taught her also, and so she can go through her toys, and every once in a while I say we need to get rid of some stuff. She doesn't fight me. We just talk about things that need to go away, um, and we do it. Even if I have an emotional tie to the thing it is because I gave it to her as a gift, I let her choose. If she doesn't want it, it goes away. Even if it's something like her grandma gave her or whatever. It, because it's her item, right? Um, so just try to think of, keep that in mind when you're looking at your, looking at your kitchen stuff. Every single thing in your kitchen when you're baking is in your way. So it's got to be very important to be, to stay there, to keep that spot. It has to be super important because otherwise it's going to make your process slower. There's no way to get around it. Cleaning, setting up, tearing down, all of it. So everything there has to be very, very useful. Okay, um, so that's what, gonna, what you're going to do. Get a notebook, write that down, watch the replay, write it down, and try it. I would love, I would, it would be so awesome if you guys tried this, like today or tomorrow, and put a picture of your box and everything in it. Put a picture in the page and like support the idea and tell other people about it and see, and have it be like kind of a little challenge for the beginning of March. You're not, you don't have to throw it away, right? So it's just something fun, something to get used to purging. You can use clear bins and racks and vertical height to organize things. Uh, because what you don't want to do is waste time looking for stuff. Okay? That's the biggest thing. So time waster is because you're looking for stuff. Um, another thing that we can do in this, again, is Claire's expertise. But And maybe you guys are doing this, maybe you aren't. Cleaning while you bake. So once, you're, once you press start for your timer and the baking starts, that's when the cleaning starts. So you're putting things in the dishwasher, you're cleaning things by hand, you can have your music on, be jamming, you're wiping off the counter, you're organizing your bakery stuff, you're putting away ingredients, you're throwing away trash, all that kind of stuff while you're baking. So the whole process, by the end of it, most of it should be clean. You might have the dish, you know, the rack that the cakes were on and the pans, and that's pretty much it. Everything else should be clean and put away. If it's hard for you to remember how to do things and what order you need to do it, it's also a good idea to get a piece of paper and write everything out on a list 
and then laminate it either with shipping tape on both sides. It's like cheap lamination, that's what I like to do. Or like expensive lamination and get the whole thing laminated or in a little sleeve and maybe tape it into the inside of one of your cabinets, like your bakery cabinet that you just cleaned out. And then when you open it, you can take a marker, like an, exa um, an expo, you know, like a dry erase, and mark off the things that you've done. And when you're finished with it, you just wipe it off and do it the next time you bake, right? Sometimes that helps people who are kind of like all over the place or they don't know where to start. You can make yourself a checklist. And everyone's kitchen's different, so there might be things you have to do that other people don't have to do. Yeah, so Annie, so she has her own business as well, and she says, I'm constantly cleaning as I go. It's just easier for me. Yeah, it really is if you're using your time efficiently. So instead of standing there on your phone or, um, you know, messing around with something else, that's, that's a time waster, right? So we want to use that time while you're baking to do the cleaning, and then you can save time all around. Something that I do at my house, too, I don't know if you guys are interested in this, but it saves me time from moving things around on the counter, is I purchased a flat, I don't know how big it is, like two and a half feet wide, three feet long, flat Sterilite box. So I use these things for storage too. But what I did is I put it up on my counter and I put it next to the sink. So as I'm working, if I have any dishes or dirty spoons or whatever, I take all of those dirty dishes and I, I put them in the clear tub, like the short tub next to the sink so they're not in the sink I don't have to like I don't have to move around them and move them to get out of my way to get the water I just put all the dirty stuff in the tub and then once I'm done I can go over there and wash from the tub it's a lot easier to keep everything consolidated and keep my um, my counter and my sinks clear so that is a good idea that we have absolutely loved we've done it every house for the last um, I guess maybe we just started it here so we've done it for about a year and a half and my husband and I both really like it Marion over here says, what are the most important tools needed to start for your bakery? Okay, um, I have a bakery supply list, which um, I don't have the link out right now. I can also link that. I'll write it down. I'll link it in the bakery business group. Um, so it's already on there. I have Amazon links if you use Amazon. If you don't, you can just read the list and get them wherever you are. I would definitely suggest, number one, a metal turntable, not plastic, metal. Um, I would suggest offset spatulas, long-handled spatulas. Um, you're probably going to need, like, mixing bowls, teaspoons and tablespoons, you know, like a, like a measurement set. Um, depending on if you want to use weighted recipes, you're going to have a food scale. Um, if you wanted to use uh, cup, half-cup recipes, of course, you'd have the cup containers. Um, you'll probably need a whisk. I would suggest a, a um, tabletop mixer. That's just awesome. I don't know if you can afford it or if that's something you're interested in, but I would just go straight to that if you can. Don't worry too much about anything else. Um, you're going to need cooling racks. You're going to need pans, depending on what you're making. So I would really need to know a little bit more about what you plan on making in your bakery before I can give you um, more of a direct list of what you need. But like I mentioned, I'll put up the list in the bakery, the master bakery supply list, and you can look at the beginner. There's like a section that says um, beginner tools, and you can look through and see what you might need from there. Tub, that's genius. It is. And then after you clean all the dishes, Autumn, you just take the tub and, and like clean that out because it's just plastic. So you just clean it out and put it back. And then you get a dirty old spoon, goes in the tub, not in the sink. It's so good. It's easy for kids too because then they don't have to throw something in the sink and then maybe break it. Um, so yes, very much. Okay. Now, that I'm going to move on to number three. And I know we're getting to the end of the hour, so I'm going to touch on this. So the third thing that people waste time on is they're wasting their time online. And I'm glad Autumn's here because she is the marketing coach inside the Elite Mentorship Program. She is very good at what she does. In fact, we're working together right now in kind of an in-person course. And I'm just going to touch on some of the main things that she said to me. I know that she's got lots more information to share, but this is the main stuff. Because what I don't want you guys doing is spending a lot of your time on Facebook or on platforms um, trying to interact in a non-business way if that is your goal. So if you're trying to use Facebook for business, then you're going you're gonna to want to mentally use it for business instead of like scrolling all day long and looking at people's posts 
you don't really need to do that unless you're interacting with them. So you want to try to stop wasting so much time online in that way on the platforms you're on unless you're doing business interaction. If that makes sense. Um, something that she told me, we haven't really gone into the specifics of the Facebook algorithm yet with Autumn, or at least I haven't. But one of the main things that she said is that when you post, it that post gets about 90 minutes of kind of like limelight time on people's news feeds. So what she suggests is that you don't post a bunch all at the same time because every time you post something, then it takes the place of the last thing on the news feed. Like they're not going to let people see everything that you've done or the algorithm won't. So if you always want to post something and then wait like an hour, an hour and a half before you post another thing so that you're constantly up on the news feed with new information rather than posting something and then posting another thing and that first thing disappears. No one's going to see it if you post it at the same time. Um, and then she also suggests that you always have a visual with your post. So even if you're going to type stuff out, type it onto an image or type and have an image underneath or use a GIF or use a video. Um, just make sure it's engaging. Uh, there's those things on Facebook too, where it's like a background image and you type on top of it. If you have the, a lower number of, um, of characters, you can only type like two or three sentences before that goes away. So consider using those aspects to stop people's gaze when they're going through, um, going through their timeline. So when you're, so you might waste time if you're making a bunch of wordy posts that don't have any pictures because people aren't going to click on it and people aren't going to stop. So that's a big time waster, right? So you want to do it efficient, be posting efficiently. Don't post like a million things at once. Just one every, you know, one, one to one and a half hour or less. Um, or you know what I'm saying? Like have them stretched out more. So you don't need to be on the internet all day long. Does that make sense? Um, and then when you're doing your messaging, some people waste time on trying to figure out what to say, how to say it. They don't, you know, they're thinking like, oh, I'm just like sitting here trying to create a marketing thing, trying to create an ad. Again, this is what Autumn's good at. So we're going to be in the elite program talking about all this stuff this month. You're welcome to join us there. Um, actually, Autumn's over here. Let me, I'm not a skilled baker. I do make breads and bagels and homemade pasta and this, and the sink just doesn't have enough space. I'm getting a tub. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, you're a skilled baker if you're making bagels. That's cool. I don't make bagels. <laughs> Monica says, I would probably use a sorter in the tub to keep the utensils, tips, et cetera, separate in case I need to quick wash. Look at you. You're amazing. Yes, yeah, so you can use a sorter. Um, right now, I actually just have two mason jars sitting in there because I keep my wands, like my cleaning wands, in one. And then we have a bunch of those little tip cleaners that we use for, we have reusable straws. So we clean out the straws in like my icing tips. I have that in another one. So yeah, you could put more jars. You could have like a square, like Marie Kondo style organizer, which I just saw a bunch of them at Target yesterday. Um, super cool. So yeah, you got ideas. Tubs, we like tubs. Um, okay, so as far as spending time online, messaging. So this is a quick, this is my suggestion for bakers, how to get their message out there quickly without spending a lot of time trying to like formulate it and copyright it. The first thing you need to do, we haven't, we're not going to be talking about market gaps today, but essentially you need to figure out who your ideal client is and what they want. Because it's not everybody on Facebook that's not your ideal client, right? You're not selling to every single person. You're selling to a certain group of people that want a certain thing. And they're buying you and they're buying like your personality and what you're good at. So you need to tell them, this is what I'm good at. This is what I sell. I'm going to take you from A to B. So let's say you do you do wedding tables for people who have big events, like dessert tables. So you say, I'm great at organization, I'm great at baking, um, you know, I have this business, and I'm gonna take you from like, you know, subpar suites on an ugly table to this like snazzy table with a delicious theme, like some kind of edible theme, right? And you can say, of course you're gonna word it better than this, but you're gonna say all that, and then you're going to show an image of something that you're talking about. So they stop and look at your post. You're going to speak to that target market. So if they're like, you know, CEOs that don't have a lot of time. So you have personal design sessions where they get what they want. And then you show up and set everything up so they don't have to do anything. Um, you can share like some fun, interesting facts about you or some behind the scenes of your business, whatever it is, or just a picture. And you can be, show your face too. Your people like you and they want to see you. So get your face in videos or in photos of your work uh, because video does convert. 
So it's just like a couple things you can put into a marketing message that you're only posting every one and a half hours or so, right? You don't want to post them too often. Um, she also suggests, I didn't mention this, but she also su suggests uh, instead of sharing your post from place to place to do an or um, like an organic post. So it's coming from you posting rather than trying to share it a bunch of times. And plus we're not supposed to do that, right? Because we're only supposed to have one at a time. So uh, just copy and paste if you want or kind of change the wording and then have a visual. So hope that helps you like quit wasting so much time on the internet trying to figure out what to say and when to post it. Again, Autumn is the, um, yeah. So her thing is <laughs> post it, put your device down, move on. <laughs> so she's definitely gonna help you save some time on your marketing because <laughs> she's like, that is her thing. She says that a lot. Wait to respond, guys. Like you have to, you have to be in the elite program. <laughs> like I'm like, she's telling me this stuff. And I'm like, I just never thought of this. It's like making so much sense to me. But it's all algorithm based, and it's actually going to help you. What she has to teach is going to help you stop wasting so much time on there. Because I know it's a ooh, it is a time sucker. It's bad, for sure. Um, just always have a mission when you're posting. Have a mission. Do it at the right time. Don't waste too much time messing around on there. Have fun with it, be interactive, have conversations, be a real person. Um, there is something I wanna mention here real quick, which is if you haven't looked at your messenger, so you have to, I think you have to go to your page manager app, okay? Um, if you go in there, there's gonna be an option where you can send questions to a person trying to message you. So they'll get the questions before they ever met, before they say anything to you. Um, so some of those questions up there could be, What's the date and time of your event? What are you interested in? Um, uh, anything. I mean, it's going to be different for everyone's business, what they need to know right away. But get that set up because that is going to save so much time with you talking to them on Messenger. Like if you can, like even if your Messenger message is like tells them outright when you're booked, that can help, right? Like you're trying to like, you're trying to divide your traffic of people automated so that you're not talking to the people who you can't work with any, anyway. You're not talking to the people who can't afford your minimum order, which maybe it's like $100. Like I don't take, you know, you could say, my minimum order is $100. If that's outside of your budget, then we aren't a good fit. You could say that right in the message. The first thing they see is an automatic thing that, that Facebook sends out. So then they would know right away that we're, that there's nowhere for the conversation to go, right? You don't have to spend 30 minutes talking to them, figuring out like what they wanna do. So Messenger, um, having those bot questions is really important. You can also set your notifications online to be lower so that you're not distracted all day and wasting time talking and like interacting. Like with Autumn, what she said, you don't have to do that. So you can change your um, notifications so that maybe you only see them when you go to Facebook instead of having them <clears throat> coming up and like making little dinging sounds and stuff on your phone all the time. Yes. So Autumn says, let the algorithm work for you by spending less time online. It's wild. Brain, <laughs> Brain explosion. Alrighty. Um, since we're over time, I'm going to go quickly through the last two, uh, but they're actually kind of important. So I will read everything I have and you can ask me additional questions in the group if you want. So the next part is creation, the creation process. We spend a lot of time here. This can feel like a time waster, a ugh moment, a oh my gosh, I just been pay someone to do this moment. That's how you know it's a time waster. That's how you can identify it's a time waster is when you feel that ugh, like that huge drag. That's how you know. Um, so the process of creation, again, early ordering is crucial to make this work. You guys have to be asking people to pay you early a week or more, they, you've got to have this stuff because you got to plan it out. And I suggest planning your whole week out prior to it happening. Um, my time frame was two to three weeks in advance for normal orders, six, uh, five to six weeks for wedding, specifically because we normally had to schedule in a tasting and that was going to happen around that time. So it helped me um, because I would also usually cut, I would give them a lot of slots, like I had slots for how many people I could take every week so I wouldn't overbook. So I would usually give them two or three slots because it's normally a tiered cake. So that's like three different cakes, if that makes sense. So that's why I asked early for weddings. Um, 
And you need that early pay because it allows you to do bulk shopping trips, plan ahead, um, figure out what you need to make. You can make stuff early that's fondant or gum paste, things that can dry and they're not. It doesn't, um, it doesn't affect them if they sit around for a little while. You can do stuff at the same time so you're not, you know, if you have blue fondant out, you can make the blue roses and you can make the blue triangles all at the same time. Does that make sense? So it's like less cleaning and starting over. Um, you can make extra boards, all that kind of stuff. So you have to have the funds on hand. And doing all those things multiple together is going to save you time, 100%. So try to do like items at the same time, if you can. Um, it also releases stress to have the funds early. You know they paid. You know that you're working for money and you're not just like, you're hoping they, you know, won't show up. That's not what we want. We want to just feel confident and secure in what we're providing. Um, it's not this guessing game of are they even going to come pick up and pay. I don't want you guys doing that because that's not worth it. And they're not your customer if they're not willing to pay you before. It's just the way it is because you're doing custom work. It's custom. It's not, you know, you don't have anywhere else to sell it. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, my third bigger suggestion here with the creation process is to create a weekly routine and stick to it. I know that sounds boring, but that's what I suggest. And you're literally going to write it down. So can it be different once in a while? Sure. This, but this should be like, you know, this is going to happen. It will very much help you save time when you're, as you're moving through the creation process, because you're not going back and forth between a bunch of stuff. So this is my mock one. This is what I did when I had my business in Missouri, <clears throat> when I was actually physically making stuff. So Monday I did online work. Do I need to like fix my website, work on my Facebook, whatever. Online work, any deep cleaning, and it's my off, my off time. Like if you don't want to do those other two things, you're just off. On Tuesday, or like life stuff, errands, all that kind of stuff. Tuesday, fondant work and shopping. Shopping for that weekend and the next weekend because I would take two, two week prior orders. You know what I'm saying? So shopping on that Tuesday or fondant. Wednesday, prep my fillings, make my boards, and bake. Not normally bake, but once in a while if I had to do something early, I'd do it then. Thursday, bake, crumb coat, and carve because that's my messy day. I call it my messy day. So if you can consolidate your messy day into one day, your life is going to be way easier. Trust me on this. <laughs> so anything that's super messy and in more than one pot or one pan or one tray, try to do that all in one day. Crumbs, try to do that all in one day. So like crumb coating and carving is all going to happen on the same day because it's all the same stuff and you're making a huge mess. Friday, I would do clean everything, right? Like you would normally. Final coats and decor. This is kind of my zen day where I'm just like, everything's ready to go. I'm just going to final coat and I'm going to pipe some stuff and I'm going to do sprin you know, sprinkles and I'm going to do my fondant thing and then I'm done. And then I'm going to get my next cake. I'm going to ice it. I'm going to do a thing and a thing. And I've got music playing and I'm, you know, jamming out and I'm getting all this stuff done. I'm boxing up fridge, boxing up fridge, finish fridge. So it's just, it's like a pro, it's like a factory line. So this is like the last thing that you have to do. And then on Saturdays, usually pick up, picks up, <laughs> pick ups and deliveries. So there's not a lot happening that day, but I have to be home. I have to be dressed. I have to, the house has to be like kind of picked up um, or I'm out doing deliveries. So I'm packing the car, cleaning the car, getting it ready. And then Sunday's off. So that's what I would suggest. Everyone's going to be different depending on where you live. Uh, I mentioned try to keep the messy day on one day. It'll save your life. Um, Group-like events to save setup time, like we mentioned. It could be anything, making all your same boards for two weeks at the same time. Making all your fun at work at the same time. Um, you know, there's all kinds of prep stuff that goes in. I'm not going to list a bunch more, but you know what I mean. Crumb coat and carve all in one day. Make all your icings and fillings all in one day, however you need to do it. Um, the last thing I'll mention about this, which is the creation process, is we already talked about purging and organizing. That's the first part. Purging and organizing so that your process can be step by step by step. You're not, you, you're finding all your stuff right away. There's not a huge mess everywhere. Um, it's just more of a factory process. That's what you want. Um, and then you want to put everything back where it belongs. So if you can't do that, then you need some help from Claire in, in the Elite program because that means your organization's off. So if it's hard for you to put your stuff away, that's going to be a problem the very next time you try to use it, right? So we got to make sure we can put it away easily too. Um, trying to find things will take you, <laughs> you're wasting a lot of time if you don't know where your stuff is. Um, let's see. 
And we already talked about, this is where I mentioned the cabinet in the drawer. I, I wrote it again. But yes, I want you to have, try to get a cabinet in a drawer for your, for all of your bakery business stuff. All by itself. Nothing else in there. Um, you can also get a stacking rolling bin with drawers if you don't have extra. I know some houses are super tiny. So, you know, you can get that additionally if you don't have anything. Or you can even put it up on the counter. It has drawers that pull out just for your bakery stuff. Or a dedicated shelf with clear boxes that are labeled in a vertical, you know, like a vertical shelf. So you can see everything and pull stuff out. Okay, guys. Thank you so much. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.